Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with algebraic fractions. So let's do a little recap first on how we just deal with adding normal fractions. So let's say you had a half plus one fifth. And the way we would deal with a half plus one fifth is we would be forced with adding or subtracting, we would have to get a common denominator. Okay, so if we have 2 and 5 as our denominator, both would go into 10. That would be the lowest common multiple. And so you'd ask yourself, what have you done to 2 to get 10? And of course, you've multiplied by 5. And you have to do the same to the top. If you multiply the bottom by 5 to get the new denominator, you must multiply the top by 5 as well. In order to keep a fraction equivalent, whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. So if I've multiplied the bottom by 5, I multiply the top by 5 as well. What have you done then to 5 to change it to 10? And of course, you have multiplied by 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. You must do the same to the top. 1 times 2 is 2 and so we have 5 plus 2 over 10 which of course is 7 over 10. Okay so before we get into the algebra here um, there's a couple of things that you should always look to do. So like before with our other simplifying algebraic fractions you will always look to factorize anything you can factorize. Um, and then you will look to cancel anything you can cancel because maybe there's, there's some simplifying you can do from the very start. In this case, now we're considering adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. We will now do the operation, whatever that is. If you're adding, you'll add. If you're multiplying, you'll multiply. Whatever you're going to do, uh, that's what you'll do after you've looked to factorize and cancel because maybe there's some simplifying, as I said, you could do before you actually do the adding or the multiplying or whatever it is. And at the end as well, we are going to look to factorize again, if you can, and cancel again, if you can, okay? So you may not be able to do it at the start and you may not be able to do it at the end, but you should always look to do it at the start before you do the operation, whether it's add, subtract, multiply, or divide, and look to do it at the end as well to further simplify your answer that might be possible to do. Okay, so let's try a question. So let's say we have two over x plus one over x plus three. Okay, so as I said, first thing you're gonna do is look to factorize. Well, there's nothing more you can do with two. There's nothing you can factorize with x, uh, one or x plus three. So there's no expression here on top or bottom of either that we can factorize. And so therefore we still, there's nothing we can look to cancel. So we're gonna come straight to step three now, which is do the operation. We're gonna add these fractions together. So just like with the numbers, in order to add algebraic fractions together, we're gonna to need a common denominator. In other words, we need something that both x and x plus three will divide into. So in order for them both to divide in, we will need to include them both. So we'll take the denominator as x times x plus three. Now you'll ask yourself, what have you done to the x to change it into x times x plus 3? Well, we've multiplied by an x plus 3. So if I've done that to the bottom, I must do that to the top. So the top, number 2, will need to be multiplied by x plus 3 as well. Now leave that like that. Don't try multiplying it out in this step. Leave that for the next step further on, okay? Because that's when usually mistakes can occur. So then we're adding because it's a plus. And then what have you done to this denominator to get this? Well, you've multiplied by an x, so we will have to multiply the top by an x as well. So the one times x as well. Okay, now we'll evaluate that. So two times x, of course, is two x. Two times three, of course, is six. And one x is x over, and on the bottom, x times x plus three. Okay, so now, Let's tidy up the top. We can add 2x and x together because they're the same. So I end up with 3x plus 6 over x times x plus 3. And now remember, once you've done the operation, what you should look to do is factorize again. And I can factorize the top. The top, of course, is um, 
a common terms type of factorizing, I can pull out a three, open my bracket straight away, and I end up with x plus two. And on the bottom, that's already factorized. I get x by x plus three. Now, it turns out there's nothing I can cancel here. Uh, so that is my final answer. Okay, let's have a look at this question here. If you feel confident, press pause and see how you get on with this question yourselves. Otherwise, uh, watch closely, we'll go through it together. So as I said before, the first thing you want to look to do is to factorize anything you can factorize. Now looking at this one, um, there's nothing more I can do to the top, x plus four. So I will leave that as it is. But if we look at the bottom, the denominator, x squared minus 16 is the difference of two squares. So I'm going to open up my bracket straight away and factorize the difference of two squares. So x by x gives you the x squared. And of course, to get 16, it is 4 by 4. And to get a minus 16 with no middle term, it must have been plus in one bracket and minus in the other. And then... We look at the other one, and x minus 5, there's nothing I can do to that on the top. But x squared minus 25, again, is the difference of two squares. So I'm going to open my brackets and factorize that. To get x squared, I must have had x by x. And to get 25, 5 by 5. And of course, a plus and a minus in the brackets. Now I'm going to see if I can cancel anything. And of course, I can cancel uh, x plus 4 on the top technically has been multiplied by 1, so therefore we'll cancel with the denominator because x plus 4 on the bottom has been multiplied to the x minus 4 um, on the bottom. So they will cancel nicely. And the same over here, technically that has been multiplied by 1, so I can cancel x minus 5 on the top and the bottom. And so what I'm left with then is 1 over x minus 4, subtract 1 over x plus 5. And of course, this is much nicer to deal with than what we had at the start. So factorizing and looking to cancel before you actually do the operation, the subtraction, um, is a key element. So now we're going to do the subtraction. And like with adding and subtracting any kind of fraction, you have also always got to get a common denominator, which is what we're going to do here. I need the lowest common multiple of x minus 4 and x plus 5. So I now need to take both of those, the x minus 4 times the x plus 5. Now you ask yourself, what have you done to that denominator to get this new denominator? And of course, you've multiplied by an x plus 5. So you're going to do the same for the top. Therefore, it's 1 times x plus 5. And again, I would leave it like that. Don't try multiply out. I know it's only a 1, but even if it was a 2 or whatever, leave it like that because especially with this subtraction, this is going to cause a sign change with whatever comes next. So leaving this in the brackets, not doing the multiplying out, will avoid errors. So please do do that. It's a good little tip to do that. So x plus 5... If, what have you done to that denominator to get this denominator? You have multiplied by an x minus 4. Do the same to the top. So again, leave it in the brackets times x minus 4. Now we will deal with that in the next step because not only do you have to multiply by x minus 4, but there's a negative and a subtraction here. So there's going to be um, some sign changes. All right. So keeping it in the brackets reminds you to do um, and deal with that sign change. So now let's multiply out. We have 1 times x and 1 times 5. Minus 1 times x is minus x and minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4. All over x minus 4 over x plus 5. And now we can tidy up. x take away x, of course, cancels each other out. It's nothing. 5 at 4 is 9. So 9 over x minus 4 x plus 5 is the answer.